Today we're going to be testing out the Bushmaster BR-308 Mac Cool Flat Armor Edition with the primary arms ACSS scope on it. And today is just going to be zeroing and firing. And we'll also have a tabletop review. Great. Well, let's get started. As you can tell here, I've actually kind of blow some of the burned off oil smoke here from the rifle. Like I said, these are the very first three shots. Uh, no zero even established yet at this point. And um, each time we're taking a shot, you can kind of see it's like a little exhaust port out the back is uh, putting off some smoke. So just make sure when you get a new rifle that you get all of the factory oil out of there because uh, in my experience, it will burn like that. So as we wait for the target to get back out here on the range, some of you might be wondering how far this range is. Um, we are shooting at 50 yards on the indoor side here. This part of the range does go out to 100 yard indoor, but it's seeing as how these are the first, uh, we just had our first three shots and we're getting ready to take some other ones. Uh, we wanted to keep it in close. It is at this point on the range during the first test that we did run into that issue with the BCG uh, and the extractor not sh uh, ejecting properly, and we'll get into that in the tabletop review. Hey there, this is Matt with Defense Innovations, and today we are going to be doing a video on the Bushmaster BR-308. This is our garage workbench review here, and uh, we're going to move this in with our shooting videos and some of our clips and hopefully answer some of your questions. So first things first, let's uh, go ahead and make sure that the weapon is safe because we'll be moving it around. Chamber is clear. Go ahead and drop my pen there. Okay, so here we go. This is the Bushmaster BR-308. This model here is stamped BFI, a lion or whatever, New York, USA, uh, which just for disclaiming purposes, this may say Bushmaster, but this gun is probably, more than likely, a DPMS LR-308 type rifle uh, stamped with the Bushmaster logo. Any of these guns that are being made in New York now are uh, post traditional Bushmaster split. The original Bushmaster guys have now created uh, Wyndham weaponry, I believe. And um, Bushmaster is now produced, I think, by the Freedom Group out of the one of the Remington facilities in New York, I believe. You can Google that. But um, yeah, there's good things and bad things about that. I wish it was still made by the original Bushmaster crew, but we'll take what we can get. So let's go over some specs real quick, uh, which you can see on their website, but I'll just go through here. As you can see, this is what's known as the 16 inch MOE 308. Uh, this one is in the flat dark earth. Uh, for those of you who care, the model number on this one is 90841. For the uh, black Magpul furniture, it is 90828. And for the OD green, you're looking at 90842. Uh, the website lists this MSRP at $1,545.79. I'm not sure really how they arrived at that number, but that's what their uh, listed MSRP is. Uh, having said that, dealer cost is probably between $850 and $1,000, which would mean, in my opinion, a fair price would be probably no more than $1,200. Um, 
just, I mean, you know, you're, you're making good money. You're making 20% off of a gun at that point. So any more than that, I think, you know, you're getting greedy as a gun shop person um, or even a store. So if you go to someplace like Cabela's or Bass Pro, if they're, you're going to carry something like this, Field and Stream, they're going to charge you MSRP because that's the way they roll. If you can find it at a local gun shop, I wouldn't pay more than 1200 new for this gun. Um, as you can see, it comes with the Magpul MOE handguard, uh, Magpul MOE rear flip-up sight, uh, the Magpul MOE pistol grip, and a standard MOE stock. Uh, a lot of them, if not all of them, come with a vertical grip. I think mine may still be in the box, but I'm not a fan of vertical grips, so I don't even have it on here. Um, these slots, of course, are compatible with their rail sections. Also says it's got a Magpul trigger guard. I've had some Magpul trigger guards. I thought they had the Magpul logo on them. So I don't know if, if I completely buy that or if that's Magpul's uh, rejects or something that they just gave Bushmaster so that they could call it a Magpul one. Uh, runs a 16 inch barrel. It's chrome lined in both the bore and the chamber which makes cleaning and longevity a lot better. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it's running a mid-length gas system and the 308 versions are going to come with a 20 round magazine. I run a lot of the 20s and the 25 uh, P-Mags. Running some fun ammo in there to, just for uh, defense, some soft points. Very accurate ammo, it's a soft point cutting edge uh, from Herders and I really like it. It, it, it's really accurate in my opinion. Okay, uh, obviously it's gonna fire both 308 and 762 by 51. It's running a 16 inch heavy profile barrel and your weight when it's shipped without all these other things on it's nine pounds. I think loaded with a mag and the scope, I'm running like 12, 12 and a half pounds. Overall length is 34 inches. Barrel length, as we said earlier, was 16 inches. Your muzzle thread pitch is 5 eighths by 24. And for those of you who care, the barrel is a 4150 chrome molly steel, so you're going to get that, that durability out of there. It's not going to be as accurate as a straight on stainless steel barrel, but with that chrome line, the chrome molly, it's going to have a little bit better longevity. So let's talk about things that I have done to the rifle, things that I really like, and things that I do not like. So let's start from the front. And I'm still running the standard A2 cage uh, for my muzzle device. I'm not quite sure if I want to change that or not. I have here the Surefire Pro Comp uh, muzzle brake here. Pretty cool muzzle brake. I'll pull it out real quick. I got another one of these on the way because you can get them for about 60 to 90 bucks on Amazon. It's a, uh, it's a dual baffled muzzle brake. Um, it's got your vertical ports there to vent gas to the sides and up to keep your, your muzzle rise down. I run a lot of the Surefire MBK suppressor compatible models on like my Mark 12 556 and on the DPMS Reaper uh, that we had as well. Really like them. They're great for recoil mitigation. Um, not so great for noise because they are loud and the concussion is not very friendly to anybody else on the firing range. But who cares? You're there to shoot, not worry about the guy next to you. You're there to uh, pew pew, not worry about his, uh, his concussion over there. Okay, um, moving right on the rifle, we're keeping the same stock uh, Magpul um, handguards on here. I thought about fr free floating something on here for, for a minute and decided that you know this rifle is a 308 battle rifle. It is not a long range engagement sniper rifle or anything. So I don't really need that extra you know accuracy quote unquote from free floating the tube. And I really don't want to spend the 150, 200 bucks and you know the 30 minutes to install it. These are just fine. They're light, they're durable. Enough said it's Magpul, you probably know about it. Um, on the Inside, I am running the Timney 4-pound AR-10 trigger system. I've had this, uh, the Timneys in a bunch of my AR platforms, excuse me, both in 308 and 556, and they've been great. They're, they're a little bit on the pricey side. Um, I've experimented with the POF systems as well. Those are also great. Uh, ALG makes a great mil-spec trigger for the money, um, but I prefer Timney if I'm doing if I'm doing a build out and I've got the funds at the time, I'll go Timney every day of the week. 
triggers is 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 like gun brands. Everybody has their own pick, and I'm sure I'll get a comment in here who who says that Jim Bob's triggers out of some state are that are better than mine, and I suck. So. Um, enough said about that. We'll move right on through. Um, I do run the KNS Precision anti-rotational pins. I picked these up on some sale on Amazon. They were FDE. They're pretty close to matching the FDE here on the um, on the furniture. It's not exact. I mean, I can tell when you stare at it, but if you just glance at it, you're not going to notice. Um, I recommend those pretty much for any build, but especially if you're running a, an aftermarket trigger. It's just another feature to keep your internals locked in place um, after many rounds have been shot. Also running the Battle Arms Ambidextrous Safety. Um, I'm a lefty, so um, that helps me out a lot. I got to get the Ambidextrous Mag release as well, which I believe is available from Troy right now, and maybe Knight's Armament. I can't remember um, if they had one as well. Uh, only thing different up here is the BCM Gunfighter Charging Handle, the 7.62 model. And on top, I'm running the Primary Arms ACSS 1 to 6 powered scope, optic, whatever. Uh, this one's got presets for 5.56 rifles, uh, 308 rifles, and 545 by 39 rifles. Um, I'm going to do a, a whole video probably on this scope later on. Needless to say, for the money, the Primary Arms product line is really gaining speed and notoriety. And for what you pay for it, I mean, it's unreal. I mean, these scopes are are just great. They're durable. They're tough. I've seen them get dropped in the mud, run over by quads. I've seen people torture test these things. I mean, I would send this thing into combat. I would put it with any military unit, law enforcement unit. I mean, I would throw it right up there with Vortex, Leupold. Uh, the only thing I don't like about them is that they're made in China. I wish they were made in, in the U.S., but um, that's probably how they keep some of the price down. So that's kind of the dual-edged sword there. Um, if you want an American-made and manufactured optic, you know, you can go Leupold or Vortex, um, but you're gonna pay, gosh, four or five times as much. You're getting one to six, which is, which is very nice uh, for medium range engagements or close range engagements. It's illuminated. Uh, it's nitrogen purge tube. Um, it, it's, just, it's just really fantastic. The only thing I added to this scope um, was the throw lever here that just helps uh, the these scopes are always so tight when they uh, when you first get them they're virgin scopes so it helps just to, to help with the magnification change there but um, I'll do a whole review on on the ACSS product line it's it's unbelievable if you're not familiar with it go to primary arms website and um, take a look at it the reticle system is is fantastic and like I said you're you're in a primary arms mount and a scope for under 350 usually I mean the nearest thing you're getting with this quality is probably six to seven hundred for vortex and between 1200 and 1500 and Leupold and I don't even want to know what what like USA optics and friggin night force would be I mean it'd be unbelievable and I really don't think you're gonna shoot any better with these you know unless you're some badass sniper so <clears throat> Other than that, that kind of clears up uh, the rifle end of it here. Um, let's talk about what I didn't like, and there was only one thing I didn't like about this gun. And some of you may have noticed when I cleared the weapon that that's not a factory BCG. So I got this rifle, I got it in a trade actually, and went to the range the next day and shot it and I got about one to two shots failure to extract failure to eject okay cleared it tried it again sprayed some lube in there just to kind of help it uh, AR 10s like to run pretty wet more so than AR 15s okay no big deal maybe it's the ammo maybe it's the gun had been fired whatever one two three four shots same deal failure to extract failure to feed or I'm sorry not failure to feed failure to extract failure to eject something was going on with the exiting of spent shell casings so i got home got online couldn't fix it at the range and um, i found that the factory bcg has had a known quality issue and the big thing has been the faulty extractor or faulty bolt 
and um, from what I found online, there was horror stories and some very few good reviews, but for the most part, people had to send their rifles back for four to six weeks, pay for the shipping, and it was about a 50-50 toss-up whether your rifle was going to come back fixed or uh, Bushmaster DPMS Freedom Group was going to say, no, it's just fine, you're limp wristing your AR-10 if that's even possible. So I just decided to go to AIM Surplus here in Cincinnati. I live pretty close to it, so it's, it's convenient. But they offer a uh, proprietary, or their own brand, I should say, of BCGs for both AR-10s and AR-15s. They offer hybrid ones, nitrided ones, nickel boron ones, all sorts of treatments. This is kind of their nickel boron one. It's, I believe, about 150 bucks but I didn't have to send my rifle back. Um, it wasn't gone for four to six weeks and it was fixed instantly. And that was the issue. Um, so I'll leave it at that. If you can, I would just go ahead and buy a new BCG and not even worry about this one because if it doesn't work the first time from the factory, I don't want to send it back and hope they got it right. So I just bought a new one. It kind of sucked, but the rifle I got in trade was, was a good enough deal that it, it really wasn't financially uh, um, prohibitive for me to do it. Things that I like about this rifle, recoil is very, very comfortable for a 30 caliber class battle rifle. Much better than like the FAL, much better than a lot of other AR-10s that I've fired. And that's even before I put the Surefire Pro Comp on there, which will hopefully help it even more. Um, let's see, very accurate. Um, we were shooting it uh, at 100 yards, indoor range from a bench, and we were getting about a quarter MOA at 100. So it was very accurate. Um, and that was using, I believe, that was using some match ammo. So we weren't just running like military surplus. We were running some nice ammo. It was either Herder's match or Hornaday match. I don't remember. But um, I'll try to upload a picture of the target that we have, but it was a very tight pattern. So that was very reassuring um, and relatively light. I mean, you can, I'm sure there's some lighter rifles out there. I'm sure I could go with some lighter furniture, maybe save, you know, six ounces or something. But overall, I thought it was very light. Um, and other than that, the quality has been fine. I haven't noticed any rough edges or anything that looks incomplete. Um, everything just seems, seems pretty up to par, except for the BCG, of course, which I uh, hope they get that issue fixed. If they do, I think they'll have a good selling AR-10 platform, kind of a patrol AR-10 if you will. So at that, I think we'll go ahead and end this video. Please subscribe, uh, and that's that red button there right in front of you that says subscribe. And if you have any comments, concerns, uh, go ahead and post them up, send me a private message. If you have any recommendations for future videos or ideas go ahead and send them to us uh, we are going to be doing a lot more this fall and winter than we've uh, previously had access to hopefully more exotic guns maybe some class three stuff so we'll see how that turns out other than that i hope you enjoyed the video have a good one